could be a mischievous reason. I don't think any court in Nigeria would make such a pronouncement because the result results in an absurdity, absurdity or how do you say, age is catching up on me. Now, the problem is how can you say because a man who has majority of plural votes, a man who has won on the remaining 36 states, then cannot be pronounced as president because he did not have 25 of one state. It means you are giving that state a special privilege in the Constitution. And the Supreme Court has consistently said, look, Abuja, you are not a state, but we will concede to you that you are a state in circumstances where we feel you should be regarded as a state. One of the such circumstances is this one. If you want to produce 25%, then it should not mean that by that privilege, you supersede all other 36 states. So it's more than absurdity, absurdity. I believe no reasonable tribunal would have pronounced How do you think going forward that our laws can resolve this? Do you think there needs to be an amendment going forward that there won't be any kind of lacuna or any kind of uh, 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 obscurity or any kind of uh, doubt over the uh, status of wherever you win or where you don't win, especially as it concerns the FCT? Look, the problem in Nigeria should not be left at the hands of the court. If we continue the way we are going, and we do not look at the processes of our statute in respect of elections, we will continue to be rushing to courts, and we will also continue to be opening our courts to all the bias, uh, biases that we have in this country. Let me be honest with you. The problem in Nigeria today is that the law that creates the Electoral Act has not been very, very nice to Nigerians. Number one, how can you say INEC, who is considered as an umpire, you will now say by law, anything he, the INEC does in the course of producing results at an election will be regarded as correct because of the Evidence Act. The Evidence Act says any act or any paper purporting to show any act being done, done by government agency or by God will be presumed to be correct. So we call it the, uh, the question of presumption of correctness attached to any document, INEC. So if INEC comes to court and says, yeah, I conducted this election, these are the papers I use, and they are all correct. There is a presumption immediately the court will grant it to say, yes, you are correct. Now, the owners now shifts to, to those who are challenging those documents to come and show evidence. And that was what the court was saying. The tribunal said, look, you know the law. You are lawyers of many years standing. So you know that when you come before a court, when pleadings are finished, you must go by your pleadings. If you fail, to show evidence, which the law says you must show to topple what INEX is, then why do you have to come to court? Why not go and look for the evidence? Now, Nigerians should learn that the problem, number one problem we have is INEC. Now, if the law is changed, that INEC, you go and conduct an election, you come back to us, come and tell us how you conducted it. These are the documents I used. And then you tell the court how you conducted the elections. And the court will see on your own evidence that you have done your job, your job. Not for the court to say, look, my hands are tied. The law says whatever you do, there is a, a, a preponderance of a correctness attached to it. So we have to look at that aspect and the bar INEC, that toga of uh, correctness attached to in the conduct of the election. 
Now, again, yeah, one yeah. very funny thing. Yeah. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to take you to one thing I'm that listening. is very fundamental since you touched on INEC. And I'd like to uh, get your view on the fact that the Constitution has empowered INEC in the third shadow of the Nigerian Constitution. It empowers them that INEC will set up guidelines as it deems fit. It empowers INEC to be able to conduct election in the manner in which there is, is power and how it deems fit, then in accordance with the electoral law. But then, INEC, uh, part of the petition has uh, claims uh, that INEC promised to transmit results to IREF, a position which the, uh, the, the courts of appeal, I mean, in this petition, presidential petition, have thrown out, that they would transmit ele the electoral result to IREF. But the court has said, no, legally, uh, that is not... Uh, totally and absolutely substantiated. How do you then place that based on the constitutional powers that the Constitution has given INEC? You see, INEC has been enjoined by statute of its election. It follows not only the statute, but to be able to follow any other rules it brings out. But we should be able to differentiate what constitutes law and what constitutes a discretion. That aspect of the law that you are talking about now only grants INEC a discretion within its rights in conducting an election to do this, do that, and do this. That is, you know, the discretionary aspect of INEC. INEC is telling us now that, yes, I wanted to do it that way, but since it is my discretion, I discovered I had a hitch. I had a hitch, and I could not, because of that hitch, stop doing the all other jobs that the, 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 the Act has asked me to do. Now, by virtue of the doctrine of uh, correctness, if you feel INEC is telling lies, INEC is hiding certain facts, you as the lawyer should not bring out facts to the tribunal to say, look, we don't believe INEC that there was any each. Our reasons for not believing are this. You give particulars. It is those particulars that constitute what we lawyers call pleadings. And cases are won and lost on the pleadings before the court. The court says, okay. INEC says I 